Welcome to Masada. Uh, this is one of the places that we visited on our recent trip to Israel. Uh, this is a mountain fortress out in the middle of the desert, uh, right above the Dead Sea. Um, very interesting place. Um, and we're going to take a look at some of the pictures that we took on our trip. Uh, just wanted to show you a couple of things before we did that. Uh, very good video to go watch if, if you want to get some more information about Masada and what happened there. Um, but you can see here, this this is the Watchmen episode 34 inside the legendary fortress of Masada. This guy here is Danny the Digger, uh, Herman, archaeologist and guide. He's really good, uh, really good video. Also, I want to show you this layout of the complex here. You can see here, this is the snake path. Uh, snake path and it kind of goes up you can actually walk this path all the way up the mountain but what we did is we rode this incline right here uh, you can see it we rode that all the way up to here and we walked over past this, this this is a little cistern right here and then you go all the way back to the gate here and this is the snake path gate and you go in here and you work your way up this way towards the uh, mountain commander's house there's a quarry here as well that they used to dig out in the mountain uh, some stones to use for building other structures and then there's a complex here storage complex here this is actually out work walk your way out this way too uh, there's a large uh, bathhouse here and also uh, a large uh, just a large palace more or less out here of Herod's he's got like a three-tier palace on the north end of this thing. Uh, you got administrative buildings here as well. Another uh, ritual bath there. You walk, uh, we walked our way around here and uh, went past this cistern here and there's a synagogue uh, right here in this blue area. Uh, right here you see the blue lines, that's the synagogue. And then we uh, ran across something really interesting right here. Uh, it says the scroll casemate a uh, very interesting thing here. I'll show you that when we get to it. Another place that uh, Columbarium or something like that. Uh, it's actually where they stored doves. And that's on the west, on this western side, there's a western palace. There's this uh, Roman ramp here. That's how they built the ramp to build the uh, ramp. And they ro rode up the uh, battering ram there and knocked it uh hole in the uh, wall there and that's when the, where they came in at the uh, there's a visiting church there uh, that was actually built about five or six hundred uh, you know five or six hundred AD so that would be a little bit later it was built later and that's where some uh, some monks ended up staying for years and for those of you that uh, do not have time to watch that YouTube video, I'll give you a little historical background here on Masada. Um, this was a uh, fortress built up by King Herod. Um, King Herod and other kings of that time, uh, when there was trouble in their area or whatever, they would sometimes go off into these fortresses to uh, wait for things to settle down because there was a lot of unrest. And so uh, King Herod, that's what he did here. He built up this fortress, uh, added all kinds of uh, watering systems and all kinds of things to make it someplace that he could stay uh, for a while if need be. Um, now King Herod eventually passed away uh, prior to even the fall of the Second Temple. Uh, his son took over, if I understand it correctly, his son took over his reign and... Uh, his son was not uh, the leader that King Herod was, and there was a lot of uprisings, and uh, and eventually the um, the um, temple was destroyed. The second temple was destroyed, um, and then you've got a group of rebels that that left Jerusalem and made their way to Masada, and they actually took over that uh, fortress. Um, and they were up there for like three years or three and a half years. There was about a thousand people. And uh, the Romans 
eventually got tired of these outlying groups of uh, Israelites, and so they started hunting them down one by one into different places they were hiding. And the, this is pretty much the last stand, uh, as was Masada, kind of like our Alamo. And so the Romans uh, surrounded that uh, mountain. They built walls all the way around the mountain. They set up forts of their own down on the uh, plains. And then they built up a ramp to get up to the western side and a tower to um, put in a, a battering ram to knock through the walls and eventually make their way in. But uh, to their surprise, when they made their way in, uh, there wasn't anyone alive. They had all committed suicide. What had happened is uh, the leader had you know, uh, discussed with him several times about what should we do and uh, do you want to be captured by the Romans, uh, enslaved, uh, and women and children, you know, even getting raped and things like that. So uh, they decided to do this suicide pact, which, which it really wasn't a suicide pact. They elected 10 people, uh, and the, the husbands would go home. Uh, all the husbands would go home, and they would uh, execute their family, wives, kids, and then they would uh, execute themselves, kill themselves. And they had 10 people uh, elected to uh, make sure all of it was carried out. And then the, the 10 had uh, responsibilities of killing each other. And so, you know, uh, eventually there was only one person left and that uh, person would fall on their own sword. So uh, not the way they expected at the end when they showed up at the top of the mountain. Uh, but this was uh, the history that uh, was left behind there. So... It's the last stand, uh, and uh, but of course, the uh, people look up to that today as a point that says uh, that, that Masada will never fall again. And so, uh, it's a really good, a really good uh, history lesson for for Israel. So, uh, but I want to show you the pictures as we go through, and uh, we'll do that. Uh, go ahead and look at those pictures. This is our first picture as we enter the Masada. And the next picture. This was an actual model that they had. This huge model that was in the middle of the lobby. And uh, you hear this? This is like the northern side. Um, this would be the southern side. This would be the side that the ramp was on that, uh, that they managed to come up the side of the mountain with. This is how we entered. Uh, up an incline on this side here. This is just a picture of the same thing. Again, looking from the south to the north. And this again would be the area that we entered and we walked up this way and then around this way on our tour. And this is something I saw in the lobby that uh, there's actually a mini series with Peter O'Toole about Masato. I'd like to watch that. I wasn't able to pull that up anywhere and uh, so we'll see if we can't run that down at some point and watch it here's a picture of the incline uh, i think that was somebody going back the other way and uh, we're coming up the mountain as you can see here this is the way you can actually walk up i think it's called snake trail and uh, you can actually come up that way now you'll see an area like right here and this over here, these were actual fortresses uh, of the Roman soldiers. And this is the, the wall that they had built around the whole entire mountainside as well. But they were sitting out in these fortresses. And they were had several of these all around uh, in different areas. Again, another picture is we're coming up the incline. of the, uh, the You could have scaled that if you wanted to. I didn't want to. I like the incline. It worked out well. And the more pictures as we're going up. You can see this is actually the Dead Sea over here. Okay. And uh, let's see. That's uh, pretty much the Dead Sea. is all you can really see there. And this is as we're coming in to uh, Masada. There's on the outside wall, there's these, these channels that gather water as it, when it rains and it goes into a cistern. And this is the uh, one of the cisterns where the water is collected. And here's our crew. We're heading up towards the 
top of the top of the uh, northern end. Um, so let's go on up. This is actually probably the quarry. Let's see here. Yeah, you see the quarry there. The quarry is, uh, this is where they gathered rocks and things like that to build on top of the mountain. So this is, you can see where they've actually gone and dug and those kind of things. I believe that's what this is. And this is just another look down from there. This is a tower. Um, this is a tower. I believe it's going to be one of the towers um, on the east side there. Uh, north side. Yeah, the east side. There's several towers along those sides. Um, this is probably one of those. It, and it was possibly also a tower that, uh, that was built to um, look over the actual palace on the northern end so it could be either one of those <clears throat> this is the commander's residence again we are at his residence you can see here we've got some uh, columns and things like that this is just part of the inner building and this is the main entrance to the square as we're going into the main entrance of the square um, and that's around where these administrative building buildings are and things like that. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. This is, uh, I think it is a bathhouse. So let's take a look inside. Again, you can see the side of the walls there. You see the black lines. The black lines are the original height of the discoveries. And then from that point above has been rebuilt. But that... That, that you see on the bottom there, that's sun showing some uh, some of the ways Romans the Romans did things. They plastered the wall and then they painted it uh, almost like a wallpaper. There's some more. You can see the kind of colors they used. Again, the black line is the original, and from that point forward is above that is actual uh, rebuilds. Just giving you a little idea of their color schemes. And the next is the uh, storage complex. Uh, this is where they had rows and rows. You can see that on your little map there. Uh, rows and rows of uh, storage complex to store food, uh, uh, weapons, all kinds of things in these storage rooms. And we'll get a good look at one here in just a minute. We're entering there. Um, you can see here, this is, a, see how long they are as they're depicted in the picture there. They're pretty long storage rooms and, uh, you know, kind of wide, but very, very long. And so a lot of stuff would be kept in there. And it actually had some that were supposedly uh, like a refrigerated unit, kind of, they would have been sealed off and they had little ditches along the side to uh, gather the water that was uh, probably cool cooling it off or, I'm not sure how they kept them cool, but it was cooler than just your regular storage. And then we went to the Northern Palace, and uh, we'll take a look at that. Here is a is a picture of the Northern Palace, and you can see here the Northern Palace. Let's just zoom in on that. It says the Northern Palace is without a doubt the architectural pearl of Masada, and it was just uh, built by King Herod. Uh, and it was fortified around it as well, uh, including the sleeping quarters, the balcony, living li library rooms, reception, banquet halls, private bathhouse, uh, all this kind of stuff. Okay, uh, but that's King Herod's doings there. He was a builder, um, and definitely was um, uh, one of the that one of one of his big things there. Let's see what this says here. There too, he built a palace on the western slope beneath the ramparts on the crest and inclining towards the north. Okay. So this is this is the northern slope, but there is a western palace as well, as you can see on your little map there. But this this was would have been 
something else. Could you imagine having to be on that building project? <laughs> that would be a dangerous job for sure. But we're just walking out to the edge of the Northern Palace there, uh, looking down. Again, you see the for fortresses there. These, this is where the Roman soldiers would have been camping out night after night. You can see the wall that surrounded everything. Here's the incline coming up. We're just kind of looking out along the side of the mountain there. Again, looking out towards the Dead Sea. Had a great view out here uh, where this northern palace was. Uh, actually had a platform you could walk out on. And this is the Dead Sea right out here. This again is a uh, another model. This is the model of the Northern Palace. Of course, it's all rubble now. Uh, this is we're standing in this area here, all around this area here. That's where we're taking pictures out this way of the Dead Sea, and then then uh, this is just the remains it would be just the rubble that's left. But this is what it would have looked like way back when, as far as when it was still standing. Here's a couple columns that are out there, and this is the most northern point here, looking out toward the, towards the north. And you can tell here by her hair, the wind's blowing something off. <laughs> so, little little platforms again. This is kind of north. Uh, you kind of you can kind of see the west side here as you go out on this, but this is the northern edge here. Beautiful views, just beautiful views. Again, you can see here, we're just looking out. This is just a gorgeous view. And uh, this is the remainders of that northern palace. This is kind of a cutaway showing you some of the um, things that you would have seen inside the palace. These, this would have been like a, a little area for, like a patio area, whatever you call it. Uh, but anyway, it was just laid out with a, with the, the tiles would have been real, you know, the Roman period tiles. Just uh, another little breakaway there. You can see again that color that you saw earlier. The colors that you'd see, this is kind of how they did their their walls. And then, then the, the tiles would be done like this. You'll see this a lot here. This is a breakaway of like a uh, sauna area. And we're going to see an actual picture of that here in just a minute but that's how the water they had heat and water come through here and it would uh, heat this room here so we'll show you that this would have been a, a bath of some sort going down here you see some more outside pool there but um, they were big on baths and you know and things like that as Romans were and of course Jewish people were too as far as that goes as far as you know cleansing themselves Again, here's a little closer up view, and you'll see this in real life here in just a minute. We'll show you an actual picture of that. The tile, and again, the colors. You could see those colors on the walls previously. This is the bathing house in Roman style. And it, uh, this is Josephus again's quote here. You can love, we'll see a lot of Josephus quotes. It says beyond the let's just zoom in on that beyond the human need for cleanliness the bathhouse also had a social function bathing and the associate associated physical activities were an important element in the Roman social and cultural life to which Herod aspired in the period of the revolt the bathhouse was adopted to the rulings relating to bathing and purity in Jewish, Jewish law we find evidence of this in two ritual baths uh, there's a there's a word there for their ritual baths, and the bench built from drums of the dismantled columns of the courtyard. So they would they would take these baths that the Romans used, and they'd make them uh, baths for purity. And this kind of gives you a picture here, what's going on here. This was that little courtyard area in the tile. There, and you see somebody back here in the actual sauna room. And then you'd come out from there. But let me just zoom in on that so you can see it. That's a bath right there. They're about to climb into that bath. 
but this would be like the sauna room and this would be the courtyard. And here's one of your baths. You just walk down the little steps and you go into the little bath there. This would have probably been that little courtyard we were just looking at as well. You can see here some of the tile. This would have been from the Roman period. And this was probably where a column was at. This probably was the way they'd come out to the courtyard. Might have just been a window, who knows. Again, another bath. This looks like one of those purity baths. And again, part of the, uh, you see part of the uh, painting on the wall there that looks like wallpaper that the Romans would have put up. This looks like something maybe the, the uh, rebels might have put in there as a purity bath. And you can see here, as we're going through a little tunnel here, they were, you usually had to bend over to go through them if you were six foot tall or so. Maybe they were a lot smaller than we were, more than likely. Again, you're seeing just examples, and you can see this is the original below here, and that's just some colors they used here. All those colors, they like, they like the burgundy. Here is the actual example of the, of the uh, sauna rooms. You can see they had this construction like this, and you'll see this in, in a lot of the bathhouses that we look at. Uh, this would hold the floor up, and then there would be heat and, uh, I think, water. They actually ran water and steam through here, and that would come up and uh, heat up the room like a sauna. All through this. This is common. You'll see this. In a lot of places we go, we saw that in a lot of bathhouses, that particular thing there. And this is, uh, I believe this is the area where the fire would have been outside and it would come into the building here to heat everything. This may have been actually an ex uh, event to go outside and uh, the, the other one would have been lower below the floor. So. We'll take a look at that. I think I got a picture of that coming up. Yep. So here's the outside here would have been a fire and everything would have been heated through this fire and uh, come through here. You'd feel that. They'd feel that on the floor. And that steam, I think they also had water in there that would steam and come up to make a sauna. And this is us going outside of that. And here's actually, out here's where the fire would be. And then these would be going into, uh, going in there as well as far as the heat. Or these might be exhaust vents, depending on how high they were. Okay. Uh, this, the fine spots of the lots. Let's go ahead and let's just take a look at this here. Um, it says, this is Josephus. He's the historian that wrote this. He was uh, also a rebel at one time. So we got to be careful when we read anything Josephus wrote in history. He was a rebel at one time. So he's going to be a little biased to some point. But then he says, Then having chosen by t lot 10 of their number to dispatch the rest, these having unswervingly slaughtered all and ordained the same rule of the lot for one another that he on whom it fell should slay first the nine and then himself. So the thought is there was these lots here that were discovered. It would have had the um, 10 men that were ch in charge more or less of carrying out this mass suicide or more or less, it's really mass murder. <laughs> uh, they actually kill everybody, kill their families, uh, and then they kill each other. Uh, so here several hundred inscribed pottery shards were found. Outstanding among them was a group of cons consisting of names and nicknames, including the name Ben Yair uh, and some others here. So um, 
our guide actually read the names off of here. He can read Hebrew, and so he could part of it. He could see part of the names. He was able to read those to us, which was really nice having a uh, nice having a guide that could do that. And this is our guide here. He's that's when he's actually reading the names to us, and uh, thought that was cool that he could do that. Now this is a synagogue. If you look on that map I gave you, it's to the left of the northern kingdom. You can see it. There's a cistern there, and then the, there's actually uh, there's a synagogue there. So this is this is where we're at now at that synagogue. And you can see here here's some of the columns that were in the synagogue. Here's the places where people would sit. And this, of course, is our guide talking to us about the synagogue. And the, people would sit along here. They'd sit on these steps and listen to a uh, priest. And that's kind of what we're doing there. And around the corner from there, you see something that says the scroll case, casemate. Uh, there was actually a, a rabbi in here uh, writing scrolls, supposedly. Now, what I discovered when I was looking at this, I, and because Richard had said something about he might actually tear off a piece of that and give it to you or something like that, uh, it was quite busy. As you can see, everybody was trying to get a picture of him, and he was kind enough to turn around and smile at us. Uh, but if you zoom in here, uh, I see a lot of cash. <laughs> so uh, this may just be a little uh, money maker of some sort, but uh, we didn't, I don't think anybody ever got any pieces, so he might have been really busy working, uh, but I thought it was very neat to see uh, this rabbi in there working on some scrolls, uh, or whatever he's working on there, some of the writings, I thought that was pretty neat, even if it's a recreation, uh, it's pretty, pretty neat. But you got to be careful, there's a lot of money making opportunities there, so we got to keep that all in here he is, he's actually looking at him, getting his picture made. Looks the part, that's for sure. Uh, and here's his little badge. Rabbi, I don't know what you can read it there. But it's pretty neat. Very, very neat. Uh, but it was a, kind of a shocker to see him sitting there, but uh, it was cool. Here we're making our way around to the... Uh, western side here this is a, a view looking out to the west and this would have been the area where the ramp was built that came up uh, that the romans built this would have been the, that area there you'll see it is kind of going this way okay and if i had to guess this is going to be uh one of those what they call Tumblarium or something like that. It's they actually raised doves in here, and you can see uh, if you look here, you can see this little. These would have been where the doves roosted in the, all these areas. So they would raise doves up to the top of the thing, and uh, I thought that was pretty neat. And uh, here's a kind of a a better picture of that. So we're looking at that. We'll go back to that other picture. You can see that here's the holes here. Probably at some time they, uh, somebody might have come in here and put up some other walls, but uh, this is looking out through the western side. But this is this is that building there. So they raised the doves there. So the question is, why did they raise doves there? Why did the king raise doves on the mountain? Well, this kind of tells us there were three Col columbarian towers on Masada. The one in front of us was used as a dovecot uh, in its ground floor and as a watchtower in its upper story. So it was a watchtower and a place for the doves. In the walls of the dovecot are several hundred niches in which the doves roosted. They supplied meat for Masada inhabitants and guests and probably also fertilizer for agricultural crops. Uh, kind of like I, I used to raise 
chickens myself and uh we had a we had a chicken coop and of course you'd go in there and clean that out and take that out and put it right out in the garden because it would help things grow that's for sure uh, this is the breaching point uh, where they actually uh, came up there with a ramp and they they banged on the wall with the battering ram and uh, eventually they got through the first wall and uh, what happened was is once they got through that first wall there's a second wall there that was pretty thick but it was built with wood and had dirt in between the wood and the, the wall and what they did is they ended up <coughs> uh, you know catching that on fire and when they caught that on fire the wind blew towards them so it was a mess for a minute and then the wind turned around and blew towards the wall and actually burnt the wall down and that's when the Romans went down at night and just waited for the walls to burn down and they would go in there the next morning to see what would happen what had happened there all right it says when night fell let's go ahead and look at that it says when night fell it was clear that the situation was hopeless and that the romans would break in at dawn elazar ben yair assembled his followers and called for mass suicide okay so the romans expecting further opposition were at a loss to conjecture what had happened here and counting the mass of the slain, instead of exalt, exulting over enemies, they admired the nobility of the resolve and the contempt of death displayed by so many carrying, in carrying it, unwavering into ex, ex, execution. execution. And that's Josephus. Again, Josephus is a rebel uh, at one time. So we got to be careful when we read all this, if, you know, uh, got to have an open mind that uh, you know the, the person writing the history here is the person involved in the history so it says the excavation here uncovered ballistic balls and arrowheads numerous slingshots and signs of burning evidence of a battle that raged on this spot so something definitely happened there and it sounds like you know it kind of ties in with the story that's been told so uh, that's good but here is the the area where the ramp would have been built and come up to the side of the mountain. Now, it didn't get all the way up. They built that tower, uh, and then they built the tower. And the tower was not built really to breach the wall. It was built to uh, put snipers in the tower that would actually try to get the, the rebels away from the wall so they could breach it at some point. But the, the tower was mainly for sniper and the battering ram. All right, so here we're going up, to, uh, I think this is, we're going up towards uh, the Western Palace there. Uh, you'll see that in your map there. It's right after the ramp area. And so that's kind of what we're looking at here. This uh, right here is, uh, it talked about this in the movie that they came about five or six century, the fifth or sixth century. This would be that, um, Byzantine church facing the east so you see that and you can see this this there's their architecture you could tell that it was their architecture here if you look at this wall and the way they they built this curved area here so this would have been that that uh, church let's see here if we I think I got a there's a there's another picture and you can kind of see there design here's what i was talking about let's see and this is the actual uh picture of what it would have looked like in the inside at one point it would have the little archway here and there's the uh the description of it here so here's the writings around 600 uh, a.d this is why did let's go ahead and pull this up here why did the monks settle in the ruins of a fortress in the heart of the desert in the desert they sought the tranquility that would bring them closer to the creator the cells of the monks who lived in masada in the fifth to seventh century uh, ce were and that's ad for us were scattered all over the mountains small buildings and caves and cisterns that had gone out of use they there they communicated with the creator in isolation and here in the church, they gathered to worship together. 
The floors of the church were decorated with mosaics. The courtyard of the church, in which some domestic installations were found, was walled. Water was brought here from the cisterns on the slopes and from renovated cisterns on the summit. So there's a working church there for a while. They had a bunch of monks. And this is us jam-packed with all our masks on since COVID was still um, concern over there. But we all had to wear our mask when we got on the, this jam-packed. Being that jam-packed, I really didn't mind. But we've all been tested, so who knows why we had to do this stuff. But that's uh, that's kind of where we ended it. And uh, it was a great trip uh, up to Masada. This is just one of the many places we went. Uh, a long ride back down, but uh, it was a great, great experience to uh, be there for that.